So for the first case, we have a 69 years old male who underwent a cholecystectomy because of symptomatic biliary stones. Last month was admitted in our department uh, because he developed an uh, acute pancreatitis. During the hospitalization, he also developed jaundice. Uh, he underwent an uh, ERCP in which uh, a stand, metallic stent was placed for a CBD stricture. At the histology, it resulted just inflammation. At the EUS, finding the aspiration, uh, was detected a pseudocystic, a pseudocystic lesion of the pancreas of 4.3 uh, centimeter. One week ago, he developed fever and underwent a CT scan that detected a pancreatic collection with air of 8.5 centimeters. Passiamo la linea. Hey, good morning. Good morning, good morning, Ale. So I have only eight minutes. So I'm going to have to go quickly, and I want to emphasize... If Who you told you to be quick? Yeah, yes, Andrea here. He said <laughs> you have okay, only okay. eight minutes to finish everything. But no problem. The Axios will take only two minutes. I okay. have then the remaining six minutes You already spent the one minute, okay. So now, this is an infected fluid collection. This patient is septic, so we have a good indication to do the drainage. If you saw this, though, in a patient who is not infected, you would not touch this. So this is very important. This is not a WAN, Waldorf necrosis. This is an acute necrotic fluid collection. Do you have the EUS image? Yes. So you can see that this is not well demarcated or walled off. I can pull back, and it's really hard to see the demarcation of this. Look at this. It's continuing down this way, like this like this. See, this is a very extensive collection here. And the problem is that as we pull back towards the tail, we're getting very close to the cardia. So you don't want to place your axios or your lumen opposing metal stent close to the cardia. You want to have it down far enough so this would not be a good spot. And in addition, there's a lot of necroses here. So we could go here, but I'm getting very, very close to the cardia. So, so can, in this situation, can you recognize vessels inside? Yes, this, you hand? must recognize the vessels. You must put the Doppler always. So when you select these cases for the optimal point for your puncture, you must use the Doppler. And you can see there are many vessels here. So we're going to have to choose a nice window. And let's... Uh, Zoom in a little bit here. Here. Okay. So you can see there's also a very thick wall. This is from the edema. And you also want to measure the distance. So from the stomach wall to the wall of the fluid collection. It is 8 millimeters. So it's under 1 centimeter, so it's fine. We can use this spot. I think this would be a good spot to go for, even though, admittedly, it's not the area where the collection is the most extensive. But I definitely have fluid here, because when you deploy the axios, it is echogenic, and when you have a lot of necroses, which is also echogenic, it can be difficult to differentiate the stent from the necroses. So you want to aim for a nice pocket of fluid. So I think we're ready to go now. I'm going to go for this spot here. We see there are no large vessels in this area. We'll take the Doppler off to get better imaging. And the first step is we're just going to advance. We have a 4.0 millimeter channel here. Now what's very important is that you never push against resistance. And I'm having some resistance here. So I'm just going to straighten out the scope a little bit and just push this out a little further. There we go. And now I'm going to get back into position. So do not push the catheter sheath out against resistance. I'm just going to turn until I can see the tip. Now you can see the tip. It's very echogenic. This is now from here a 100% ultrasound guided procedure. We're not using any floral. We're not going to look at the endoscopic image. We're going to focus only on the needle tip here. We've already hooked up the cautery. We're using pure cutting current, so we're going through our checklist. And we've already measured the distance of the wall. We're under one centimeters. There are no vessels interposed, so now we're ready to do our puncture. All right, so I'm going to press now on the yellow pedal, and we're going to go through.
going through, I'm inside. Now, if you are inside, you feel it, then you just torque a little bit till you see the tip. I'm going to push it down a little further. I'm going to lock here. I can turn this for you a little bit so you can see. So I am going to lock the sheath. And now I'm going to take off this safety. So this is the yellow pin like that. Okay. I'm going to unlock and I'm now going to deploy the distal flange. And I just pull up like this while I'm looking on the ultrasound, slowly pulling up. This is a 15 millimeter diameter. So we could use a 20 millimeter, but I've chosen a 15 because there are many blood vessels in the area. But you have to have at least a 15 here. Now the next step is you unlock and pull up your, your uh, sheath to snug the deployed distal flange against the wall. And you pull it until it starts to deform a little bit. It's deforming. Now I'm going to lock again. So to show you that here, lock again. Now I'm ready to deploy the proximal flange. And I'm going to deploy this inside the working channel. So you just pull up and it's going to deploy inside. You're not going to see this, of course, on the ultrasound. But now that I've fully deployed, I'm ready to switch to the endoscopic view. And only now do I shift my view to the endoscopic image. So please go to the endoscopic image large. And I'm going to start put, giving a little bit of gas now as I'm turning my body slightly to the right. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to push out the proximal flange. And you see it coming out there. You already see the pus draining. Sometimes you need to advance the gray hub a little bit just to see. I've pushed it out and we see the pus is completely impairing our view. Look at the, the pus pouring out. This is why this patient is septic and this is why this procedure we're doing this morning is going to save this patient's life. So we are doing something that is without question indicated in all of us in the room, we can smell yeah. it too, huh? <laughs> you smell the pseudomonas, right? The pseudomonas. Okay, so our next step is, and Andrea... We know you genius, but you can smell pseudomonas. We can nice. smell the pseudomonas. <laughs> That's this very is good. Pseudomonas. Very good. Okay. Unquestionable. Okay. All right, now we'll, in my we'll, remaining minute, we'll I'm send going you to proof dilate of that. Here. Okay. Here we go. We're going can. to go in under vision now. You can see it going in. No guide wires needed. I'm going to push until I see the purple. Okay, almost there. One moment. Ken, there is a question from Chris. Uh, yeah, Ken, can you tell us, uh, you know, which patients with acute necrotic collections you'd use this technique on versus traditional percutaneous drainage, which is more standard in, in um, you know, acute necrotic collections as opposed to one? So I think it's a question of, you know, we, what we need to discuss now is how we're going to manage this after the axios is in. One moment here, I'm going to, I've just had a little bit of resistance, so I'm going to just pull back and go back in again. You can see I don't have great, uh, great visualization, so one moment. So it's going in smoothly here, up to here. Just give me a quick second, and we have to decide, I would prefer nasal cystic irrigation here, but if he doesn't get nasal cystic, then at a very minimum, he needs to have weekly um, irrigation and debridement. So, of course, the pus is impairing my view, but I think what we can do is go ahead and start to inflate yeah. now, okay? Just in the interest of time, because I'm inside. Let's start. Start, yes. Okay, good, I have it well anchored. Inflate. There we have a nice view. There's the balloon going up, right? Yeah. So the lambs is anchoring the balloon nicely in yeah. the lumen. Okay. So we are 15. 15. Now, now you're going to go up one higher. All right. This is a 15 millimeter. I'm going to go one higher to 16.5. 16.5. Yeah, 16.5. Done? Done. Okay. Now deflate. Deflate. Okay. Now so I'm you going. Don't wait no, much, no, no need to wait. No need to wait. As yes. As you reach the yes. diameter, this yes. is enough. Okay. Now I'm ready to pull this out. And after this comes out, we're going to switch yeah. scopes. But first, it played a little bit more because I don't want to accidentally pull out yeah. the axios, right? Just make sure it comes out smoothly. Okay, you can already look inside. Now we pull, quickly pull this out and switch for the gastroscope. Okay, now. in the meantime, we switch to the gastroscope. We move to another room and okay. we'll be come back to you in five minutes. Okay. So, can we have a presentation on the next case? 
Aiken. Yeah, so I have to show you the lovely underwater views inside of our cavity of here. You can see that uh, we're, the purpose now is just to clean the uh, contents. We're not going to do debridement. We're just going to irrigate maybe with one or two liters to make sure this is nice and clean. Can, can I make a provocative question? Yes. <laughs> so do, w would you use endorodor now? No, no, but maybe in the, uh, in the future session, we okay. would consider using endorotor. So I'm a big fan of endorotor. I know, this and is why I made the question. it works very, very well. But you need to have a special, um, uh, the, the uh, shaver is a different shaver for necrosectomy than for the EMR, or for the shaving of the polyp. Yeah. So it's a different So what is ne your next step now? So now we were talking about this I would recommend nasal cystic catheter for continuous irrigation. But if we don't do this, then it's acceptable to just pull out, take off of PPI so the acid can go inside. But of why, why we should not do this? Pardon me? Why we should not do this now? The, 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 uh, naso, naso the naso cystic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We no, because do. he's coming from another hospital and... They thought you, maybe, you do what, what you think is better for the patient. Yes, I would do nasocystic. If you see pus, then I think you should do nasocystic irrigation. But at a very minimum, when you have this kind of walled off necrosis or nec necrotic contents or infected, you must do weekly debridement. You must bring the patient back, keep on antibiotics, keep off of PPI, weekly debridement. Okay, can naso, nasocystic drainage, nasocystic tube for just aspiration or also for giving no. fluids for lavage? For lavage, it, it, well, you can lavage manually, but it's for continuous irrigation. irrigation continuous. Okay, so can I ask have comments to the flow. expert here? Chris, you agree with the nasocystic uh, drainage? I, yeah, I absolutely do. Uh, and I also agree with the underwater part of this because I think it's very dangerous when you don't have a wall to be blowing a lot of CO2 into the abdomen. I think yes. that's a real important point. That's a very good point. So I'm Rita and George, everybody agrees on nasocystic. Okay, and that's you also... Better. You also agree on the underwater approach to avoid CO2 in that non-delimited space. And Is that correct? And it's exchange, right? Okay. So we're exchanging. We're not just putting water in, you're exchanging. Yeah. So there's a comment from Amit. There is uh, another method of doing it, Ken, is to place a plastic pigtail stent for now, and then go in after 24 hours and then do a mechanical debridement with the scope. In, because with nasocystic, some of the debris can come and block your stent, isn't it? If you do irrigation from one way. So you're saying like a multi-gate, is that your idea here with a, with a separate entry site? Yes, now, now that you have cleaned the, the cavity uh, yes. once, you just place a plastic stent to allow the fluid to drain out, go in again after 24 hours and clean it further. Yes, you could Instead do that. Of, because if you place a nasocystic catheter, fluid is going in one direction, and the debris can come and st block your stent. No, the, the debris will come out. It's a 15 millimeter, and we dilated, you know, yeah. sufficiently. So I think there's enough. As long as you have flow, continuous flow, it'll drain out. It's when you don't have that continuous flow, then it gets clogged. So it's critical is to have the continuous flow. Or a hybrid of that is to place um, one or two you know, seven French double pigtails, and the last thing you place is the nasocystic. Leave that in for 72 hours and then pull it, and if the patient is so doing have well, now, the bring them, th yeah. now so they have, have double have pigtails in place to this deal with This is not... The uh, and then oh, okay, okay. It should be possible. Okay. Isn't the seven French? The seven friend? French? Yes. Okay. okay. So we'll place the nasocystic Okay, now. thank you so much. It's been a wonderful demonstration. Congratulations. Thank you. you. You're working like a team. You, you recognize your brother there, your Italian brother, yes, Andrea. Yes, so my good, Italian good, good. brother, okay, Andrea. Okay, great. <laughs> First That's hot good. Axios in Italy, okay. maybe Europe. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't exaggerate. Okay. That okay. was good. That we, 